Hey, how's it going? Hope you've been out fishing. Um, so today I'm going to tie up by, I believe it's my fourth, I don't know, maybe fifth saltwater inshore fly for the trip to Louisiana here in November. Um, and it's uh, called the uh, Red Deucer. It's probably very similar to a seducer, um, but it it uses feathers and some some flash and it uses uh, estaz. But we'll cover that. It's actually even got a bead chain where I believe the seducer doesn't have that, but I could be wrong. I don't remember. But uh, anyway, let's uh, take a look at the fly and uh, start tying. All right, this is uh, Dubell's. I believe that's how you pronounce his last name. Uh, his reducer. Um, it's a great fly, not only for maybe redfish, but uh, spotted sea trout, black drum, sheep's head, and even flounder. Maybe I'll give it a try this week here locally. Um, yeah, so. He's out of Florida somewhere, I think around St. Petersburg, and it was developed for that area, but I don't see why it won't work in Louisiana or even maybe here locally here in Charleston. It can be uh, tied in different versions. It's, uh, you know, you could, in different colors like uh, chartreuse, red and white, all white, and the, the color pattern that we're going to tie today is going to be... Uh, tan in there. So why don't we go ahead and get tying and uh, we will uh, dis describe or show the materials as we go along and they'll be also in uh, in the description of the, the video. Alright, first thing we'll do is, uh, you know, I always debar my hooks. No matter if it's a trout, saltwater, bass, Whatever it is, it's easy to get the hook out of myself, out of maybe my fishing buddy if I hook them, and uh, it doesn't take long to uh, to unhook that fish if I'm not going to keep any, and it also minimizes uh, me damaging the fish if trying to get that out of there, if especially if they had swallowed the hook a little deeper than normal. The thread I'm going to use is going to be a 210 in red denier, or yeah, 210 denier, 3 aught. And we're just going to start this like one eye width behind, behind that, give it a few wraps. On there. Next we're going to use some large gold B-chain. You know that probably can be adjusted, uh, the size of the B-chain could be adjusted to, uh, to the water depth that you're fishing. And we're going to put it as close to the eye as possible. And what that's going to do, it's going to kind of dive nose down in the water. Maybe entice the fish to, to strike at it. And make sure that it's perpendicular. Put some kind of yolk type style wraps also besides the cross to help tighten it up. And then helicopter around it. Now 
Next we're going to use us some uh, Crelex for flash and copper. And you're only going to need, I don't know, roughly 10, 10 fibers. You might don't have to really count. That's about about ten there. I'm going to wet this end, and we're going to leave it long, and we're going to make sure that it's uh, tied or cut at the end when we put the tails in. And we're just going to keep this on top of the hook. And we're going to tie it in back to the barb of the hook here, or where the barb used to be. Next we're going to do is we're going to grab four tan colored uh, rooster hackles and you can see I've been tying quite a few. There's not much of the big ones left. Um, yeah, so most of that's all small. But we'll we'll find something to that'll tie in probably this piece for that. But I already got four selected. And you might notice that uh, some are going to be a little wider. And we're going to go the the length of these is three hook gaps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take. Uh, A wide one and some of these are a little narrow so I'm going to take a narrow one and we're going to tie them in concave so that they're curving towards us or away from us however you like to tie it in give it a few loose wraps and then what I like to do is so that it stays in there otherwise just tying on the stem that didn't quite work right I got one not concave wraps and then we'll pull this through and uh, I'm kind of happy with that and wrap that back to where the the tail is we'll, we'll trim that one off now we'll flip this over and grab the uh, the other two.
redo that. And uh, next we'll put in is we'll select a piece off of here for um, for the hackle. I suppose you could use a saddle hackle if you want, but. Uh, But I'm tying with uh, make sure at least the barbs are the gap with there. And the next material is going to be some standard Estaz. And this is in gold. I couldn't find any uh, tan, so I'm, I'm sure that this is close enough for tan. Some in there. Tie this in. And we're going to go ahead and take this up to uh, right behind the, the dumbbell eyes. And then we're going to go ahead and wrap this around for the body. And I like to, uh, even though the fibers are short, I try to pull them back so I'm not trapping so many. time of the year the trout bite should be picking up you know for the big gator trout so hopefully I'll catch a, a gator trout the biggest trout I've ever caught is uh, just over 20 inches so I'm hoping to maybe break that this year and that wasn't even on a fly rod so we will uh, see what what happens And I'm only going to take this up behind the, the dumbbell eyes, but I don't see why if you wanted to, you could maybe cross over those eyes. But uh, I'll 
tie it off with it from on the bottom. Give it a couple wraps there and a couple locking wraps. And then I'm going to flip it over to cut this off. That way the thread's out of my way and I'm not not cutting cutting my thread. fingers and brush these fibers back and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it one full wrap at the back here behind the estaz and the tail and then I'm going to counter or not counter wrap but wrap going forward kind of like a woolly bugger or you know palmer it forward And I'm not worried, I'll even let the fluffy stuff go into this. And then I'll give it one full turn around the head. Behind the eyes there. And uh, lock this in on top. And then I'll snip off the excess. And I suppose if you wanted to reinforce it, you could have maybe even tied in uh, tied in a rib there. And then we'll just tie it off, build up a little head here. Give it a four or five turn whip finish. some hard as hell. I'm not going to use UV on this one. Um, I want to try to maybe keep those bead chain eyes so that they make a little noise. I think those the copper flash Crelex is just right at the tips like we want so I don't have to do any trimming you know you might have to but I didn't have to I you know only use half the shank versus pulling a whole shank out and there we have it see if I can get that zoomed in better all right. I'd say tie up a few of these and give them a try in other colors. All right. That's how uh, I tie up this red deucer. Never used it before. I've used sea deucers in the water and have, have had luck with them. But I'm sure that this will be just as well. Do just as well. All right. We're, uh... Anyway, tie up a few and give them a try, especially with... Uh, the big speckled trout starting to show up probably around Charleston here. I haven't been out on the salt water for a while. And uh, we will uh, we'll see what it can do. All right. Give it a try. Tie them up. 
and uh, have fun fishing. Daryl Olson signing up.